Gentile from Latin gentiles, by the French gentil, feminine, gentile, meaning of or belonging to a clan or a tribe is an ethnonym that commonly means non-Jew. Other groups that claim Israelite heritage sometimes use the term to describe outsiders. The term is used by English translators for the Hebrew gui and inkri in the Hebrew Bible and the Greek word etne in the New Testament. The term, Gentiles, is derived from Latin, used for contextual translation, and not an original Hebrew or Greek word from the Bible. The original words goi and ethnos refer to peoples or nations and are applied to both Israelites and non-Israelites in the Bible. However, in most biblical uses, it denotes nations that are politically distinct from Israel. Since most of the nations at the time of the Bible were heathens, Goy or Gentile became synonymous with heathen, although their literal translations are distinct. The term Gentile thus became identical to the later term Umat Ha'olam nations of the world. Latin and later English translators selectively used the term Gentiles. When the context for the base term, peoples, or nations, referred to non-Israelite peoples or nations in English translations of the Bible. In Mormon contexts the word can be used to refer to people who are not members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The Torah exhibits a passionate intolerance of those Gentile nations that practice idolatry, because of the alleged immoralities that are connected to such practice. It alleges that these nations' barbarism would contaminate the Hebrews. Paul Copin argues that the Old Testament accounts employ the conventional extreme rhetorical exaggerations pertaining to the descriptions of war and conquest common in the region at the time, which readers would have been familiar with. Etymology <inaudible> Gentile <inaudible> derives from Latin gentiles, which itself derives from the Latin gens, meaning clan or tribe. Along with forms of the cognate Greek word genos, gens is also the root for other English words, such as gene, genealogy, general, generation, genesis, genetics, genome, gentleman, gentry, and genus. Gens derives from the Proto-Indo-European asterisk tis. The original meaning of clan or family was extended in post-Augustan Latin to acquire the wider meaning of belonging to a distinct nation or ethnicity. Later still, the word came to refer to other nations, not a Roman citizen. <inaudible> Hebrew Bible In St. Jerome's Latin version of the Bible, the Vulgate, gentiles was used in this wider sense, along with gentis, to translate Greek and Hebrew words with similar meanings when the text referred to the non-Israelite peoples. The most important of such Hebrew words was goyim singular, goy, a term with the broad meaning of peoples or nations, which was sometimes used to refer to Israelites, but most commonly as a generic label for peoples. Strong's Concordance defines goy as nation, people, usually of non-Israelite people, or of descendants of Abraham, or of Israel, or of a swarm of locusts or other animals fig, goyim equals nations. Strong's hash 1471 In the pre-exilic times the relationship between Israelites and Gentiles was mostly hostile and the non-Israelites such as Babylonians, Egyptians, and Assyrians were always seen as an enemy. After the exile, the Jewish-Gentile relationship became less hostile. The books of Ruth and Jonah reject the racialization of the Israelite religion by Ezra. In rabbinical writings Topic. Tanaic attitude Rabbinical writings often show more hostility towards Gentiles due to frequent persecution of the Jews by these nations. Some rabbis show more compassion towards the Gentiles, while others are less tolerant. Eliezer ben Hyrcanus writes that the mind of every Gentile is always intent upon idolatry. He believed that Gentiles only perform animal sacrifice to make a name for themselves. He further believed that Gentiles have no share in the world to come. Other rabbis show a more positive attitude towards the Gentiles. Joshua ben Ananiah believed that there are righteous men amongst the Gentiles who will enter the world to come. He believed that except for the descendants of the Amaleks, the rest of the Gentiles will adopt monotheism and righteous amongst them will escape Gehenna. 
There is also a story about a dialogue between Joshua ben Ananiah and the Roman emperor Hadrian in which he tries to demonstrate that God deals with Israel with greater punishment for similar crimes. Eliezer of Modium wrote that Israelis, when guilty of the same sin as Gentiles, will not enter hell whereas the Gentiles will. Eliezer ben Azariah believed that the rulings performed by a Gentile court are not valid for Jews. Rabbi Akiba believed that Israel's monotheism is far superior to the ever-changing beliefs of the Gentiles. Jose the Galilean criticizes Israel for inconsistency compared to the faithfulness of the Gentiles to their ancestral beliefs. He believed the good deeds of the Gentiles will be rewarded as well. The most famous of the anti-Gentile teachers is Simeon bar Yochai. He is often quoted by antisemites in his sayings. The best of Gentiles kill it, the best of snakes cut its head, the most pious of women is prone to sorcery." His beliefs might reflect the extreme persecution of the Jews by the Romans during his time and the fact that he spent a great portion of his life escaping from the Romans. Judah ben Eli suggests that the recital, "'Blessed be thou who has not made me a Gentile' should be performed daily. Ananiah ben Akabiah believed that shedding the blood of the Gentiles, although not punishable in human courts, will be punished in heavenly judgment. Jacob, the grandson of Elisha ben Abuya, wrote that he saw a Gentile binding his father and throwing him to his dog as food. Simeon ben Eliezer does not favor social interaction between Jews and Gentiles. <laughs> Amoraim attitude Ananiah bar Hama wrote about the extreme immoralities perpetrated by Gentiles. He believed that in messianic time only the heathen will be subject to death. Hezekiah ben Hiyya believed that treating Gentiles with hospitality results in the exile of the children. Johanan bar Napaha wrote of the mistreatment of the Jews by Gentiles. He believed that the evil of the serpent was neutralized in Jews, whereas the Gentiles still have that in their blood. While he also wrote that the wise amongst the Gentiles should be treated as a wise man, he further wrote that a Gentile who reads Torah deserves death. He has also said, Whoever abandons idolatry is called Jew. Abahu complains of Gentile mistreatment of Israel. He endorsed the law according to which a Gentile should not be compensated if his ox was damaged by an Israelite. Asi suggested that Gentiles should not be taught about the laws of the Torah. Abba B. Kahana refers to the Book of Ruth and preaches against the racial arrogance of Israel. Topic. Later sages Rav Ashi believed that a Jew who sells a Gentile property adjacent to a Jewish property should be excommunicated. A reason to discriminate against the Gentiles was the vile and vicious character of them Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 21. The Talmud, referring to this passage, recalls the Gentiles of Barbary and Mauritania who walked naked in the streets. The violation of Jewish women by Gentile men was so frequent that the rabbis declared that a woman raped by a Gentile should not be divorced from her husband, as Torah says. The Torah outlawed the issue of a Gentile as that of a beast. A Gentile midwife was not to be employed for fear of the poisoning of the baby. The Gentiles should be dealt with caution in cases of using them as witness in a criminal or civil suit. The Gentile does not honor his promises like that of a Jew. The laws of the Torah were not to be revealed to the Gentiles, for the knowledge of these laws might give Gentiles an advantage in dealing with Jews. Resh Lakish wrote that, A Gentile who observes Sabbath deserves death. In modern times Under rabbinical law, a modern-day Gentile is required only to observe the seven laws of Noah, while Jews are bound by Mosaic law. In periods of decreased animosity between Jews and Gentiles, some of the rabbinical laws against fellowship and fraternization were relaxed, for example Maimonides himself was a physician to the Sultan. However, even though most rabbinical schools do not teach the same hostility as Middle Age rabbinical teachings some orthodox rabbinical schools hold extreme conservative views. For example, scholars from the Zionist Merkaz Harav Kuk Yeshiva are schooled in the doctrine that Jews and Gentiles have different kinds of souls. One of the Yeshiva's scholars, R. David Bar Hayam, published in paper in 1989 explaining the doctrine, entitled, Yisrael Nikraim Adam. Jews are called men. In his conclusion, Bar Hayam writes, 
There is no escaping the facts. The Torah of Israel makes a clear distinction between a Jew, who is defined as man, and a Gentile. This distinction is expressed in a long list of halachic laws, be they monetary laws, the laws of the temple, capital laws, or others. Even one who is not an erudite Torah scholar is obligated to recognize this simple fact, it cannot be erased or obscured. One who carefully studies the sources cited previously will realize the abysmal difference between the concepts Jew and Gentile, and consequently, he will understand why Halacha differentiates between them. Bar Chaim further quotes Abraham Isaac Cook (1865–1935), founder of the yeshiva and the first Ashkenazi chief rabbi of the British Mandatory Israel. The difference between the Jewish soul, in all its independence, inner desires, longings, character and standing, and the soul of all the Gentiles, on all of their levels, is greater and deeper than the difference between the soul of a man and the soul of an animal, for the difference in the latter case is one of quantity, while the difference in the first case is one of essential quality. Similar anti-Gentile remarks have been expressed by the late chief Sephardi Rabbi Ovadia Yosef, in which he stated in a sermon in 2010 that the sole purpose of Gentiles is to serve Jews. He said that Gentiles served a divine purpose, why are Gentiles needed? They will work, they will plow, they will reap. We will sit like an effendi and eat. That is why Gentiles were created. These remarks by Yosef were sharply criticized by many Jewish organizations such as Anti-Defamation League ADL and American Jewish Committee. In Kabbalah Some Kabbalistic writings suggest a distinction between the souls of the Gentiles and the souls of the Jews. These writings describe three levels, elements, or qualities of soul. Nefesh, the lower part, or animal part, of the soul. It is linked to instincts and bodily cravings. This part of the soul is provided at birth. Ruach, ru the middle soul, the spirit. It contains the moral virtues and the ability to distinguish between good and evil. Neshama, Nesemih the higher soul, or super soul. This separates man from all other life forms. It is related to the intellect and allows man to enjoy and benefit from the afterlife. It allows one to have some awareness of the existence and presence of God. Both Jewish and Gentile souls are composed of these three elements. The human soul has two additional elements that are completely outside of the lower realm of existence that all humanity currently lives in. These parts of the soul are neither felt nor experienced even by a Jew who has them. It cannot be experienced by any person while they are living in the physical lower universe. That obviously does not mean these additional parts do not exist. They are called the Chaya and the Yechida. The only distinction between a Jewish soul and a Gentile soul is how it is nourished. Each part of the soul is nourished by a different aspect of fulfillment of a commandment. Gentile souls require and are completely fulfilled by more basic nourishment which comes from the seven laws of Noah. The Jewish soul derives additional nourishment that it requires from the proper observance of the additional commandments. Christian Bibles In the King James Version, Gentile is only one of several words used to translate goy or goyim. It is translated as nation 374 times, heathen 143 times, gentiles 30 times, and people 11 times. Some of these verses, such as Genesis chapter 12 verse 2, I will make of thee a great nation, and Genesis chapter 25 verse 23, two nations are in thy womb, refer to Israelites or descendants of Abraham. Other verses, such as Isaiah chapter 2 verse 4 and Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 23 are generic references to any nation. Typically, the KJV restricts the translation to Gentile when the text is specifically referring to non-Jewish people. For example, the only use of the word in Genesis is in chapter 10, verse 5, referring to the peopling of the world by descendants of Japheth. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families, in their nations. In the New Testament, the Greek word ethnos is used for peoples or nations in general, and is typically translated by the word people, as in John chapter 11 verse 50. Nor consider that it is expedient for us, that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. 
The translation, Gentiles, is used in some instances, as in Matthew chapter 10 verses 5 to 6 to indicate non-Israelite peoples. These twelve Jesus sent forth, and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Altogether, the word is used 123 times in the King James Version of the Bible, and 168 times in the New Revised Standard Version. Christianity The Greek ethnos where translated as Gentile in the context of early Christianity implied non-Israelite. Jesus himself in Gospel of Matthew forbade his disciples from preaching unto the Gentiles in Matthew chapter 10 verses 6 to 7. These twelve Jesus sent forth, and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Later on with the ministry of St. Paul the Apostle the Gospel began to be spread among the non-Jewish subjects of the Roman Empire. A question existed among the disciples whether receiving the Holy Spirit through proselytization would be restricted to Israelites or whether it would include the Gentiles as in Acts chapter 10 verses 34 to 47. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues, and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water, that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? Within a few centuries, some Christians used the word, Gentiles, to mean non-Christians. The alternative Pagani was felt to be less elegant. Topic. LDS Church usage In the terminology of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints LDS Church, the word Gentile takes on different meanings in different contexts which may confuse some and alienate others. Members of the LDS Church regard themselves as regathered Israelites, so sometimes use the word Gentile to refer to all non-members. According to John L. Needham of Utah State University. Mormons in the American West applied Gentile, as an adjective as much as a slur, to nearly everyone and everything that did not adhere to their faith or desert kingdom. Because they had suffered persecution, the word Gentile was a call to circle the wagons socially and politically around the fold. In such usage, Jews may be colloquially referred to as Gentiles, because they are not members of the LDS Church. However, the traditional meaning is also to be found in the introduction to the Book of Mormon, in the statement written to both Jew, literal descendants of the House of Israel, and Gentile, those not descended from the House of Israel or those of the tribe of Ephraim scattered among the Gentiles throughout the earth. Needham writes that Mormons have outgrown the term. The LDS website states this about the meaning of Gentile. As used in the scriptures, Gentiles has several meanings. Sometimes it designates people of non-Israelite lineage, sometimes people of non-Jewish lineage, and sometimes nations that are without the gospel, even though there may be some Israelite blood among the people. This latter usage is especially characteristic of the word as used in the Book of Mormon and Doctrine and Covenants. Islam Some translations of the Quran, such as the famous Pikthal translation, employed the word Gentile in some instances of the translation of the Arabic word al umayyan For example, in the following verse, Among the people of the scripture there is he who, if thou trust him with a weight of treasure, will return it to thee. And among them there is he who, if thou trust him with a piece of gold, will not return it to thee unless thou keep standing over him. That is because they say, we have no duty to the Gentiles. They speak a lie concerning Allah knowingly. Quran 3 to 75. Topic: Antigentilism. Gentile also appears in compounds such as antigentilism, hostility of Jews to non-Jews. Topic: See also. Amharitz Gijan Ger Tashiv Kafir Mawali Noidism Shabbos Goy 
who is a Jew. References External links Jewish Encyclopedia, Gentile Catholic Encyclopedia, Gentiles <references>